Signal if we get in trouble. Absolute destruction that the Russians are raining on the uh, civilian population here. This was a science classroom. It's just completely destroyed. And this is all from Grad rockets, indirect fire, just coming in and just destroying the place. And this is the area's only school, which is now completely destroyed. Yeah. Absolute animals. So, Danny, how did you find your uh, little experience out on the front line? Yeah, it's uh, an eye opener. The fucking things that are happening out there, oh, it's disgusting. And all you can smell in the air is just burning, everything burns. And the smell doesn't go away. There's dead animals in the streets just rotting away. There's animal and human shit everywhere. It's not nice. And that's just one small, tiny village. So, yeah, it's not good. So Dan, his first experience of living outside of uh, the luxuries of Lviv, Kiev, and other places. But he had a good time. Uh, he figured out the shortages of importance of not wearing shorts everywhere, which is also a good fit. Uh, and he got to play with some cool things, so he's had a good time. And uh, we'll hopefully be able to bring that knowledge and expertise back to other guys and go from there. We're actually rolling still in our old original ambulance right now, one of the uh, specialities. The little babe, she's still sort of rolling, she's in a bit of a shit state. The window don't work. A couple of warning lights, she's still there. Uh, but she's still going. What's wrong with the window, Danny? It won't go up. It doesn't go up. Yeah. Urban and aircon. Now yeah, mine works, just Danny's just fine. Following on for a bit more about our little battle wagon here that's managed to continue to save lives. So you guys can see this. So this used to be a map of Ukraine on here that obviously we had to paint over. Just up here, look. There's a piece of shrapnel from a Grad rocket that's stuck in the side of our girl. So, thank you very much whoever made the conversion of this. You uh, 
you kept us safe for a bit longer. All right, just a quick update for those. We're out and about still responding to uh, calls and providing medical care to uh, those in need. Uh, while the outside looks a bit different now, everything's still uh, as is. We have a look outside. I don't see too much, but in the front. So it's not busy times. Um, obviously, it's not just casualties that are alive we're dealing with now, but also a lot of uh, body recovery um, and ensuring people have a dignified uh, rest in peace area rather than just left on the side of the road, which is, is entirely inhumane. Uh, the Russians have been incredibly violent here. Uh, all of, you know, clearly war crimes. Slaughtered people in the streets just unnecessarily and bind them and kill them. Um, you know, it's time for the international community to really stand up and do something about this. Thing. A huge thank you to everyone that's donated to uh, our cause for ambulances uh, for Ukraine. Um, not only will we provided emergency ambulances in terms of providing patient treatment, uh, critical and intensive care, evacuation of wounded troops and civilians, but we've also been able to provide specialist 4x4 ambulances. Uh, between your donations, uh, um, ambulances for Ukraine, and then also Midlands Humanitarian Aid, we've managed to provide not only clinical care and capabilities to the majority of Ukraine that we've managed to touch, um, but also provide ongoing food and humanitarian support to civilians that are trapped. Many of you have seen sort of Danny Lambert's group, uh, Midlands uh, Humanitarian Midlands Support, um, and the stuff that they've been doing has been absolutely phenomenal, along with uh, Humanish, um, the Polish Ambulance Service uh, group that is obviously helping evacuate patients out of uh, Ukraine to EU. Uh, facilities. Um, you know, the stuff that Danny and I has been doing is phenomenal. If any of you can support him in his mission to help deliver food and other vital aid, that'd be fantastic. Those of you who wish to continue to support us in our clinical role uh, of providing support, our team on the front line are directly providing Kazabak uh, on the ground and then also providing ongoing clinical support to uh, training the UA. Uh, Army and National Guard and ongoing civilian personnel in terms of civil defense in TC3 care and then also making sure that they have the tools and the experience themselves to be able to deliver the care that they need to keep people alive. The care that we all take for granted every day when we just pick up the phone and ring 999 or 911 and somebody appears to help us. Unfortunately that doesn't always exist here in Ukraine and they do rely quite heavily on uh, Westerners and volunteers in order to come and help provide that care. So I need you guys to all dig deep if you can, if you could donate anything at all to help keep this vital mission here running. Um, you can see some of the equipment we're using isn't exactly ideal, but we're working hard to get stuff done. Find a medic. What,